Greetings, everyone. This is going to be a brief and very rough demonstration that I'm going to do for you today. This is going to be one of several videos that I'm going to be doing for my graduate uh, class in wireless forensics. Right now, I am using Camtasia. I am using two virtual machines, and I am going to demonstrate a basic uh, man-in-the-middle attack. There are many kinds of ways, tools to accomplish this, but what I'm going to use is something called ARP cache poisoning. ARP cache poisoning is address resolution protocol. This is what we use when we get an act, uh, try to access an internet connection where the network connection links a MAC address to an internet protocol address. What I'm going to do first is I have my attacker machine right here, which is Linux Backtrack in one virtual machine, and in a second I have my victim virtual machine, which is going to be obliviously surfing the web at his favorite coffee shop, and then we are going to poison their ARP cache. We are also going to be using a different tool called SSL stripping. What this does is, on the user side, it strips off the HTTPS secure connection. What this does is that the person thinks they are going to a secure site, i.e. Right? checking their email, going to a bank, and when they put in their username and password and they click that button, ordinarily if the secure connection goes off, they are in encrypt they're encrypted. If SSL stripping is employed along with ARP cache poisoning, what happens is on the user side that little HTTPS is ripped off. So whatever that user sends out and browses gets sent out in clear text. So what I'm going to do is first we are going to take a look at the victim system and we will notice a couple numbers first real quick that is the IP address of the victim which is 192.168.1.104 and the default gateway which is our router 192.168.1.1 and if we can get a good internet connection here I will demonstrate See, you'll notice if you come up here, you'll see this HTTPS with a lock icon. That means you are in a secure environment. We're going to do our little uh, evil here on the attacker machine, and then we're going to come back and take a look at the victim machine. What we have to do first to accomplish this from the attacker side is we have to uh, enter a few commands which are going to enable us to actually be a conduit. We will have uh, we are going to trick the victim computer into thinking that we are the router. In order to do that, we're going to execute some commands, uh, three of them, the last of which is going to be something called ARP spoof, which I'll show you in a minute. First, what we're going to do is Bear with me here for a second while I get this other one in. Destination. Yeah, I didn't enter that correctly. Let me try again.
Okay, those first two commands, what we've done is we've forwarded uh, port 80, port is a network, an open uh, connection from our computer to the network. What we've done in effect is 80 is the default port for HTML, unsecured. What we're doing is all traffic that comes through there is going to be redirected to another unused port, which is 8080. And the second command, which I finally got it correct the second time, is creating tables, which will, which is the routing command, which will allow the other signals of packets to come through us. This third command we're going to run is called ARP spoof, and this is what is going to send out hundreds of ARP requests out to the victim's computer, and it's going to replace his ARP tables with our information. Okay, what we've done here is this is our victim's IP address, and this is the address of our default gateway or router. We are, this address we are going to poison with our information. Now, if all goes well, it'll start sending out our packets. And there we go. Just give this a moment, and then we are going to bring up SSL strip. This was created by Moxie Marlin Spike at Black Hat in Washington DC in 2009. So I'm going to demonstrate this uh, basically exploited vulnerability mostly which because people just didn't pay attention because they look up into the, the little browser bar and they don't always see the little lock with the HTTPS and as a proxy we strip that away. This does not work entirely but it is still work enough to be troublesome in an unsecured wireless network. So. Now we're going to have SSL strip run and listen on 8080. Remember that's the port that we assigned the uh, unsecured to be uh, forwarded to. Now we're going to go to our victim computer. Now take a look here. Remember when I showed you the first time there was that little HTTPS that was up here in the uh, the top of the browser bar? It's no longer there. So whenever I uh, we log, what we're sending out here from now on is unsecured. So I'm going to enter my Now you see, as soon as I entered my information, it failed. See, that's the part where a lot of the web browsers have now countered this, in my opinion, have countered this uh, vulnerability exploit. As you can see, ordinarily in the past, the user would just go right on into the website. Say, if they were going into a bank, they would not know anything was, was wrong. So they could enter credit card information, uh, bank account numbers, social security numbers, and all of that will be done in clear text. Right now, we can't log into a site like this. Others don't work at all. Like I found Gmail doesn't work. But uh, here, I'll show you the actual results. If we go to back to our victim, or our, sorry, our attacker machine, I'm going to call up the log. This is the log file. All the information that was gleaned from stripping the uh, the uh, HTTPS information is kept in a log file. Here, what I've done is I've actually copied this out to a file and I've parsed it on my host computer. So.
So I'm going to search for user ID. And as you can see, I know you've seen it once before, I blotted out the uh, user ID, but I also I changed my password, so this is not my real password now. But as you can see, even with some of the stripping uh, curved, you can still get user ID and passwords using this application. Mind you, this I found is only successful when you are in an environment where you have uh, don't have to enter a password. Basically, uh, those are wireless hotspots. If you go to a coffee shop, if you go to an airport, you go to uh, probably not some of them, even some of the McDonald's and others have you enter them, but a lot of these hotspots where you just go and your computer basically just accepts the signal, those are still vulnerable. And many people, when they see something like the uh, web page crash or not allow you to enter like this, the average person is just going to say, well, well, something's probably just wrong with the server right now. They're not letting me on. I'll just go check my email and check. I'll just check on this later. Meanwhile, I've got your username and password. This is the first of my uh, demonstrations. This is a little rough. I'm going to do a few more. I'm also going to add some uh, other uh, background features to it, show you exactly what ARP cache poisoning is. So at this point, I'm going to sign off, and I will be back again later. Have a nice day.